time for a calculus problem. Um, you know, this one's a little weird, uh, but you see a lot of them like this. Uh, and it, there's one really important point that, that shows in here. So here's the problem. Uh, I actually have a, I made a little video of this too. Uh, let's see if I can play. Here we go. So this is a ladder sliding down uh, and falling uh, on as it's leaned up against the thing. So it has a, a four meter length and it's three meters from the floor. These are just stuff I made up. And then the top is moving down at 50 centimeters per second or half a meter per second. So the question is, when the ladder is one meter from the floor, the left side, uh, how fast is the right side moving? How far is the floor part moving? So you'll see these in different forms, but let's just go and solve this problem. There is one really great thing from this. Here's our ladder. I just drew a picture and we need to start labeling all our stuff. So we have this, right? We're going to call the, the top part of the ladder Y uh, measured from the origin, which is at the corner right there. And then we have the position from the wall. We'll call that X and the length of the ladder is L. And you see here that we have a right triangle, right? And the length of that L is, uh, that's four. Y starts at three, but here's the most important part of this diagram is that if I have these three variables and it's a right triangle because I have a vertical wall and a horizontal floor, which I assume, they didn't say that, I'm just assuming it, then X squared plus Y squared is equal to L squared. And I want to find the velocity for X. So I'm going to solve this equation for X and that's pretty easy to do. Subtract Y squared from both sides, take the square root. Uh, X is the square root of L squared minus Y squared. And I know also one other thing the y velocity, vy, or which is dy dt, right, is negative 0.5. It's moving down. It's negative is important. <laughs> okay, let's get to this problem. So I have this, right? I have x, that's my value, my function of x. And I want to find the x velocity, so I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time. Personally, I like to take derivatives not with square roots. I'd rather write it as a power. So I'm going to rewrite this as L squared minus Y squared to the one half power. That's just the way it helps me think about it better, right? Because I can use the power rule now. The, de the velocity is just the derivative with respect to time. So let's just take the derivative of this function with respect to time. Here's what you, the first step. So I have my uh, L squared minus Y squared to the one half. I bring the one half down front, reduce that by power of one, I get negative one half. But I'm not done, right? I'm not done because now I have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of the stuff inside. L's, L's constant, so there's no derivative there, but Y is not constant with time. So I need to take the derivative of this and, and multiply it and I get negative two Y, right? Because I have, it's zero, it is actually zero minus two Y because again, I use the power rule, but wait, still not done. I have to take the derivative of y now. And the derivative of y is dy dt, right? You can't just say, this is the mistake I would have made in, as an undergraduate. I promise you, I wouldn't have put dy dt. And then we can call dy dt the y velocity. So I get this. The velocity in the x direction is negative y. That's this part right here, right? The two and the two cancels the one half and the two, but the negative doesn't. So I have the y, this is vy, the y velocity. And then I have this, I have one over, I'm gonna put this back as a square root, one over the square root of L squared minus y squared. That's kind of important. That's really our answer there. We just have to plug in our values, but let's check some stuff, right? Because there's a lot of important things that we can look at. Number one, the x velocity is not constant. Even if the tip of the ladder moves down at a constant velocity, which may or may not happen, it doesn't really matter, but the x velocity is not constant. It changes, right? Because as y changes, then this changes. It depends on y. What about the units? Do the units work, right? I know this is a math problem, but we still have units. So I, the velocity has to be in meters per second. Let's just check and see if we have meters per second here. Vy is in meters per second. That's good. But y is in meters. So what about this? Well, now down here I have meters squared, meters squared, but that take the square root. So I get meters over meters and they cancel and I get meters per second. So that's good. Vx is moving in the positive x direction, but Vy is negative, right? Because it's moving down. That's good. Because if I put in a negative velocity right here, I have that negative sign and I'm gonna get a positive. So 
That's what we that's what we expect. What if the ladder goes the tip of the ladder goes below the floor, right? If that happened, then y would be negative, and the other end of the ladder would start moving back towards the wall, uh, and that 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 does give it a negative velocity, right? If I have vy is negative, y is negative, I have a negative, I have negative, negative, negative is negative. There's three negatives. And so the vx would be negative. So if the, if the top of the ladder goes below the floor, then the, the floor part would start moving back towards the wall in the negative y direction, x direction. So that's, that's fine. <clears throat> that's good. And okay, well now we need to find the actual value. So here's our solution. That's our, and we're just gonna plug in our numbers. So I have y is equal to one and the y velocity is negative 0.5, and, and the l was equal to four. So if I plug that in, and I put I didn't put the units on the bottom just because it gets a little bit messy, uh, but there I have negative one, that's y, negative 0.05 meters per second, the square root of four squared minus negative one squared, which is fine, uh, and I get this. So then this top up here is 0.5, the, I have 16 squared, or 16 minus one, is 15 square root of 15, and it's 0 0.129 meters per second, and that gets a box because it's, it's the best. Now, just for fun, I did uh, plot this in Python. I'm not gonna go over the code for that, but if you wanted to make a plot of this in Python, that's kind of fun. So here's the two, the two plots. This is the y position as a function of time. It has a constant velocity, right? So that's not really that interesting. And here's the x velocity. You can see that the velocity is not constant over that time. If you wanted to, you could calculate the exact time where the, the, uh, the object's at one meter from the floor. I mean, you can kind of look at it right here, right? Uh, here's y at one meter, it's at four. And then I can go up here and look at uh, four and get the position, the slope of this line would be the velocity. But let's just pl plug that in. So if I want to say y is equal to one meter, and then this is my function for x, x is the square root of l squared minus y squared, I can get my value for x. So I have my, my y and my x value at that time. If I want to have the actual time for that, I can, since the velocity in the y direction is constant, I can just say the y position is the y, initial y plus vy times t, assume that's where it starts at t equals zero, and then I can just plug in my value for y. Uh, my initial y, my final y is one, my initial y was three, divided by the velocity, and I get uh, four seconds. So you might need that for something. I actually used that to find, I was gonna put a dot on the graph and, and, and plot the slope and everything, but then I was like, uh, you guys just wanna do the calculus problem, okay? So the, the most important part here is when you take the derivative of the x function, don't forget you have to take the derivative of y with respect to t, and that is the, you get the y velocity. Using the chain rule is the part that I would probably mess up on the most. But there you go, ladder calculus problem. Hope you enjoyed that, I sure did.